Uh, next one's from Don Keycon, and the subject is Tony Khan's hostages. What's up, guys? In the last month or so, there's been a lot of weirdness going on with AEW's talent. Word came out that a whole bunch of talent have asked for their contract releases, and even people like Malachi Black and Buddy Murphy pretty much confirmed that they were leaving the company until they weren't. Good old boy Dave Meltzer reported, quote, Tony Khan isn't going to release anyone. He's backtracked on his agreements, unquote. Now, on the, that's an interesting choice of words. Uh, now, on one hand, good for Tony Khan. He's finally acting like a boss, and he can't just let Tally come and go whenever they feel like it. On the other hand, Tony Khan is going to have a locker room full of complaining, negative, toxic wrestlers who really don't want to be there. And I think by keeping them around, that bad attitude is just going to spread. Plus, as you guys have said a billion times, AEW has way too many wrestlers, and it was a perfect time to free up a lot of space. Which side of the bait do you guys fall on? I, I fall on the, the last sentence that we've been saying all along, bro. They have too many guys. You can't keep them all happy. And that's what they're going through. And like, honestly, you don't want to give the perception of, of like having people, um, having people feel that they can just leave whenever they want. You're at a point in time right now where this is actually a good way to cut some costs. You've got guys who you know, just, just bro, they should just let it, but you're not doing anything with these guys. Just let them go. Like, I don't understand why you would pay guys and, and pay them exorbitant amounts of money to not use them hardly at all it's like well that that's not good business not let me ask you a question conan and triple a you guys have contracts or you get nightlies there how, how, how do guys get both. paid you're both so different like like kind of like aw i guess right. Does have, right so but but what do you do with guys that like you did you're just not using it like you're contracted guys do you have any contracted guys that they're paying maybe it was a previous contract or somebody you brought in and, and it hasn't worked out and you're not using them no, because usually everybody I use, I, I use correctly. Right. Because I know I'm going to have to deal with. Right. I just think that Tony lives in this world where he, he doesn't want anybody to think anything's wrong in his company. And he thinks for image reasons, it would look bad if he let people go and it might open up the floodgates and embarrass him. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what contracts are for, bro. Gym, a deal is a deal. You just can't quit your gym membership right. or stop paying your house. So. I would, me personally, if I had a problem with contracted talent and they wanted to leave, I would, I would probably, I haven't had this problem yet with contracted talent, but I just sit your ass down, you know, and I'll freeze you. You're not going to go into the locker room and contaminate the locker room. A deal is a f deal. Right. But um, here's another thing. Why don't you buy out your contract? If you really want out that much, buy out your f contract or the person that wants to use you. Have them do it. Gabe Spokolsky did that to us, which I thought was kind of f***ed up. But we what wanted to explain this. You know, ba Gabe Spokolsky or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Spokolsky. So when Lucha Underground started, I wanted I wanted uh, Rich Swan, A.R. Fox, and um, Ricochet, right? Uh -huh. Of course. They were all working for Gabe. Gabe signed them up when they were really, really young. None of them had a copy of their contract. None of them knew when it started, when it ended. They didn't. They had no idea. I tried to get a copy. He called me up like a little crying. Oh, I'm going to sue you for torturous interference and all this other, you know, and just acted like a. <laughs> and uh, at the end of the day, we ended up paying money to buy Ricochet out of his contract so he could go to Lucha Underground because I told Lucha Underground, it's worth it, bro. I guarantee you the money you're going to pay for Ricochet is worth it. So they did pay for him. And then when we wanted to use Rich Swan, he wanted to hit us up again. I go, no discount, no nothing. He goes, no, no. If you want him, same price as Ricochet. F you, dude. And so that's basically what happened there. But you know what? I just thought of something, Glenn. This is a out of box for wrestling but mm -hmm. not in general, right? Mm -hmm. So the NFL, the NBA, the NHL, they make trades. Why don't you have a mediator who can talk to somebody in WWE and say, for instance, Malachi Black no longer wants to be here. So-and-so, let's say Braun Strowman, doesn't want to be in WWE. Let's make a f trade. You know what it's I'm saying? It's not a bad idea, right? Yeah. yeah. And that way you, you get a return on your investment because that's another thing you know you've invested time and money on talent and then they just get up and leave right well plus well, two you guys get the, the half these like most of these guys are using agents today let them earn their money right you know we'll negotiate a trade you know, stuff like you know try to right. get try to get yourself try to get your client uh, in a better position that's not you a know? bad idea right it's not a bad idea at all
Yeah. Or what? It's what a happened? Really good idea, actually. What happened to the way it used to be, where it's like, okay, Malachi well, wants to leave. All right. Well, for the next thirty days, you're putting everybody over on TV. You could do that, and then you can Absolutely. go. Could, yeah. I mean, what happened but, but, to that? But, that? but 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 the problem with that is, Joe, we had like way more people watching back then, right? And we had like all these other like syndicated television stuff, and like you, you know. But ultimately, you're punishing a guy's brand. Just to do it doesn't help your show. Yeah. Like if you're taking a guy and beating him each week and then throwing him out on TV and like everybody knows he's just going to get beat, you're going to have people ch- turning the channel when that guy comes on TV now. Yeah. Because they know they you're know not doing leaving. it. Right. Right. So, so, so you would, why would you purposely hurt the numbers on your television, potential numbers on your show, just to teach a guy a lesson? Right. And the thing is, you just take, keep the guy at home and don't, don't, and don't, don't have him come to TV. I want to specifically bring up one person that if Tony Khan should, should she should let go. Okay. Guys make, I, I, from what I understand, I may be incorrect, but I think he makes a million dollars a year is, and they're doing nothing with the guy is Miro. What would you do with Miro? Wow, would you he's keep, getting a million dollars a year? I think he year? gets a million. Yeah, that's wow. what I'm saying, bro. Bro, let me tell you something. Dave, you know, they keep bragging about million-dollar houses, right? Okay, well, you did a million-dollar house that's paying for Miro this year, and you're doing nothing with them. You know, <laughs> it's just right. like, like, where's the right, you know, like I'm saying, so it's like, you know, when you have guys like that, and they're making a million, why would you just not let the guy go? They're doing nothing with him at all. Nothing. Well, you know, inexperience caught up to him, and you know, he got he tried to buy everything, and now he's finding out what the the, the price of that. He, I don't think he thought that at any point the wrestlers would become unhappy under his right. his, his leadership. Right. And it's like, dude, you just don't get it. It's like right. you don't know what it's like to have have people come to work and you're telling them, I got nothing for you except this two minute match on on, on dark. Right. Or Juice Robinson's gonna get a match with Moxley, but you're not right. and you've been here the whole year. Right. Exactly. You know, and like that's what how do you think they're gonna react? Yeah. Just be happy because you're paying them handsomely. They they could get they were getting paid everywhere they've gone. Right. Most of these people. I was people, being you know? paid handsomely yeah. in WCW and I was I'm right, very you were unhappy. Surprised, right when we're not used. I right. was, you know, bro, I was making fifteen thousand dollars every two weeks of paycheck, and they weren't doing it with me. And I was, I wasn't happy. Right, you know, it's like, it's like, uh, yo, what up? This is Conan, and I host Keeping It One Hundred. My co-host Disco Inferno, unfortunately. Well, I'd say you're my co-host. Listen, every Thursday here on Spreaker, we talk pro wrestling, sports, movies, music, TV, pop culture, some politics. It's everything the rest of the pro wrestling podcasts are not. Tune in to hear myself, the superior one, educate and inform. Tune in to hear me bury disco. That's very disrespectful. Join us every Thursday on Spreaker and keep it 100. Boom!